And you can see there an image of one of the Russian gymnasts. Maybe you saw this last night on tape delay on NBC. Uh, the, the poor Russian girls, they were just, I mean, grief-stricken when they lost. Obviously a personal tragedy for them to lose this. Uh, but you know what? When they lose, the nation feels it too. The nation feels it. And how the Olympic athletes perform can actually affect the stock market. Mark Culbert here to talk about this one today. And, you know, Mark, I read your column. And, I mean, the thing I immediately thought of was 1980 in Lake Placid. Uh, I mean, that's you talk right. about... And in fact, uh, that's a perfect example. Yeah. The, the lead-in, the example of the Russian gymnast team losing the gold is another great example from right now. You can imagine the national pride that has been uh, at least dashed a little bit in Russia because of that. And believe it or not, it seems uh, counterintuitive to really tie it to the stock market, but a number of studies have found that that depressed mood after your team loses actually affects your stock market behavior. And it's uh, an amazing illustration of how our emotions can trump our intellects when it comes to investing. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, you talk in the column about how uh, sometimes in, in a city where there's an NFL team, when that team loses on a Sunday, you can see the effects on Monday. Well, that's right. And the, the, key, the, the key assumption behind that is it turns out that most of the investors in a local company tend to be from that city. Right. So what the academics were able to do is look to see what happens on the Monday morning following the weekend loss by that NFL team, especially when the odds maker had that team uh, expected to win or win big. It turns out that those local companies tended to perform markedly less than the overall uh, averages on that Monday morning. Again, an illustration of exactly this point. In fact, the academic studies I looked at have looked at everything from the Olympics to NFL to cricket to World Cup soccer matches. It turns out it's, uh, it's fairly widespread and it's, uh, and again, a very sobering illustration of just how emotional we are. We tend to think of ourselves as intellectual, rational beings and yet over and over again, we see illustrated right in front of our eyes that in a contest between our intellects and our emotions, it's the emotions that end up winning out. Right. So I guess the bottom line for the market is, is they should root for the Giants to win the Super Bowl every year. But let's 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 <laughs> well, move and on. many people are, of course, or doing maybe exactly the, that. the Jets. Yeah, you know, I, I guess, mean, yeah, you know, we can try to draw, draw a particular investment consequence. For the Olympics in particular, uh, I don't know exactly what that might be, but one might be able to come up with some trading strategy depending on who you think is going to win. But I think it's the broader point of that uh, oftentimes we ought to sit on our hands, and especially when we uh, get to know ourselves and find that uh, we're, we're feeling particularly low that day, regardless of the reason, perhaps we ought to think twice or even thrice before doing anything in our portfolios. Uh, Mark, can this go both ways? Can you start making some irrational decisions uh, towards, say, buying? If your team does well, if the Olympic, if your Olympic team does well, I mean, could you start to make some bad decisions on the other side? No doubt. Though it's interesting, these studies focus primarily on the consequence of losing. Mm -hmm. They found it was a far greater consequence to a portfolio when you are losing, when you, your team has lost, than when you won. Now, there are plenty of other studies showing about over, the, the consequences of overconfidence. Though I've yet to see any studies that trace it to uh, when your team wins, but I can imagine that it would be the case too, of course.